14 plus terabytes of data and um, close to 30 million files. Carmageddon cripples campus. The new James opens its doors. And will Mirror Lake be dry for the annual jump? That's all right here on Buckeye News Now. Welcome back everyone, I'm Rithika Shah. And I'm Ariana Bernard. You're watching Buckeye News Now. Ohio State seemed to come to a halt this past Sunday as the learning management system known as Carmen became unavailable. The system is used by instructors, faculty, and staff as a place to have students upload their assignments, create online quizzes, enter student grades, and much more. I sat down with Vice President and Chief Information Officer Mike Hoffer to bring you the cause of the problem, how it is being handled, and how it has affected students and faculty. We've done this process every semester for um, the past number of years with no incident at all. Um, and this year when we did it, we had a corruption in our file system and that file system um, corruption is what brought down karma. The cause of the file corruption is unknown, but steps were immediately taken to address and fix the problem. However, the large size of Carmen has delayed its resolution. Plan A, which is uh, fixing a corrupted file system, and Plan B, restoring a complete file system. And the issues there are, Carmen is large. Um, we're talking um, 14 plus terabytes of data and um, close to 30 million files. Carmen serves as an online learning management system and with its shutdown, some students have had a difficult time preparing for classes and completing their assignments. Um, I have an exam Friday and in the nursing program, all the professors Panopto their lectures, so I have not been able to listen to the Panopto for that exam. I won't be able to listen to it at all this week. Um, as students, it's really hard because we don't have our syllabuses with us, and so it's kind of made us a little bit more stressful. Carmen's unavailability has not only had an effect on students, but on professors as well. It's been an event very inconvenient, especially when you think, yeah, it's only going to be down for a couple of days. So you don't really think of it as that big of a problem, but right now it's become a problem because I have students who are going to get an assignment and I usually put the assignment on Carmen. Well, now that it's not there, you have to figure out some other way to get it to them. There are, however, a number of alternative options professors and students can use while Carmen is down, and they are listed on the Distance Education and E-Learning website at odee.osu.edu. We always learn from our mistakes. We'll hopefully learn from this. and. Um, we understand what an inconvenience this is, and we're really trying to, you know, m get this resolved as quickly as possible. Reporting for Lantern TV, I'm Ariana Bernard. Love is greater than hate. At least that's what one OSU student stands by, even though he was physically attacked for being gay and kissing his boyfriend just on High Street. After posting a tweet about the incident that went viral, Cole Ledford says he just wants the Ohio State community to take notice and to take action. I just wanted my friends to know what had happened, and I wanted Ohio State to be angry. I was looking for the worldwide reaction that came, because I've always felt safe here, I've never felt there was a bad situation. I wanted Ohio State to care. Uh, the more this has developed, it's become such a positive, I think Ohio State really has shown me that support. But I think worldwide, I've got people who are emailing me telling me that they came out because of my tweet, that they felt so supported and so empowered because of it, that they wanted to share their story with the world as well. It's still so incredible to me that one person can't make the difference that I seemingly have. Uh, but if anyone ever feels this happens to them, make a chance, make a change. Give some opportunity to make your story known because it will help other people whether they send you an email about it or not. I think love truly is greater than hate. I mean, I'm still getting hate mail from all of these things. People who are still homophobic or still against the LGBT community have tweeted at me negative responses, but it's been overwhelmingly positive. So we've been getting so many great love stories and how much love has empowered people that the hate is completely washed out and it doesn't even come to the forefront of our minds. It looks like the Mirror Lake jump will remain safe for one more year. Administration and planning spokesman Dan Hedman and confirmed that the lake will most likely not be drained in time for the jump, even though there was some talk of doing reconstruction around the campus landmark earlier in the year. This comes after about 50 to 100 students took to the lake after Ohio State's 49 to 37 victory against Michigan State last weekend. A Facebook event says the traditional Mirror Lake jump is scheduled for November 25th, and 3,000 plus people have replied to the event saying they're attending the jump as of Wednesday afternoon. Well, after last year when they had the restrictions and everyone had to have those bracelets and losing back IDs, um, I can't say that I would be totally shocked if they tried to put on more restrictions. 
I just really hope that they don't because I feel like it takes away from the whole experience. Uh, it was kind of like a student started uh, thing. It's, it's not very, run, it's not run by the university, it's run by the students. And I think that in that respect, it's a lot easier for people to get behind it. It's something that we're doing as, as students, as people are on age. The new James Cancer Hospital and Soul of Research Institute opened its doors to the public this weekend. After breaking ground in 2010, the $1.1 billion facility is gearing up for new patients this fall. Lantern TV reporter Taylor Cameron was at the open house and brings you more on the latest developments at the James. Hundreds of people waited outside the James to get their chance to see the new facility. <laughs> On Sunday, the new James Cancer Hospital and Solov Research Center opened its doors for public tours of the new state-of-the-art building. Guests had the opportunity to visit various floors and mingle with staff members. Today we're welcoming in the community. They've been watching the building go up. They've been watching the building get more and more developed, and today they get to see what the patients are going to see in a month when they move into our new building. The new James is the third largest cancer hospital in the nation. Standing 21 stories tall, it houses 14 operating rooms and six interventional radiology suites. The new center opens December 2014. But you also think about the community and how much they give to make it comfortable for patients to put up buildings like this to recruit the talent that goes inside of these buildings. It's really a feeling of gratitude that says, let's make sure the community experiences this before we open. Each inpatient unit in the James is dedicated to just one specific type of cancer. It's that sense of fear that one has when you hear those three words to be followed very quickly by a feeling of hope that I'm in fact going to beat this disease. I think that's what this building is going to do for us. 2014 brings a record number of applications to Ohio State. And a recent OSU grad talks about his midterm election win. All that and more coming up next on Buckeye News Now. For some people, imagining where they'll be in their early 20s is a nerve-wracking idea. But just at age 23, OSU grad Neeraj Antani will be representing the Montgomery County area in the Ohio House of Representatives. Neeraj won big with the rest of the Republicans during the midterm elections last week, and Lantern TV sat down with him to talk about what it was like navigating the election and what his plans are for the future. Our generation deserves a voice. The legislature should look like the people they serve and young people make up a great, a great segment of the population uh, of Ohio and deserve representation. Also, you know, with the way that technology has changed education and uh, industry both, we need someone who has grown up with technology, who understands how to use it uh, to our advantage. Um, so I think that you know, young candidates bring new perspectives and, and fresh ideas uh, to the problems that we face, and I'm gonna fight to, to make sure that our voice is heard. Ohio State is getting a little bit more selective in the admissions process. The 2014-2015 enrollment report was released on Monday and showed the university received nearly 43,000 applications, which is about 8,000 more than were received in the previous year. The number of admitted students did not increase. In fact, it dropped by almost 50 students. Currently, there are over 58,000 students enrolled in the Columbus campus, and total enrollment at all campuses is at a record high of nearly 65,000 students. From 66 degrees on Tuesday afternoon to the mid-20s this morning, the cold weather did live up to the hype. If you haven't dusted off the winter coats, hats, and gloves yet, you'll need to do that this weekend. John, how long can we expect these frigid conditions to last? Yes, with Canariana, that cold weather is here to stay for this afternoon. Only going to get up to about freezing, 32 degrees for your afternoon high. Chance of flurries through the afternoon, so don't be surprised if you see a couple snowflakes. No accumulation expected. Winds out of the northwest about 11 miles an hour. Cloudy skies throughout the afternoon. Heading into your day on Friday, low of 24 to start the morning. 34 degrees by the afternoon, a little bit warmer than it is today, but the sun may peak out here and there. Partly sunny skies, winds out of the west at 5 to 10 miles an hour. Another chilly day in store for your Friday. As we head into your weekend, not many changes to speak of. 21 degrees to start out your Saturday, the lowest low here in our forecast. Eventual high of 36 degrees for the afternoon. The one bright spot will be that the sunshine will be out quite a bit more uh, for your day on Saturday. Mostly sunny skies 
calm winds, but a glimpse of winter with these very chilly temps. As we head to Minneapolis, Minnesota for the Ohio State game on Saturday, 9 a.m., 15 degrees. By kickoff at noon, 21 degrees. By 3 o'clock as the game is winding down, the eventual high of 24 by 6, 20 degrees. But the big thing is going to be wind chills hovering around about 10 degrees, maybe a little bit lower in those single digits. So definitely if you're heading up there, bundle up. It's going to be a very chilly one. For your day on Sunday back here in Columbus, 28 degrees to start out your morning, 39 degrees by the afternoon. Maybe you're heading out to church in the morning, definitely throw in the scarf, the mittens, the gloves. Chance of snow flurries through the afternoon. Again, little to no accumulation expected. Heading into your Monday morning, though, we could wake up and see a dusting of snow. 29 degrees to start out, 36 by the afternoon. Again, the first real chance of some sort of dusting of snow. I do expect it to be on some of the grassy surfaces, probably going to mid off the roads at this point. But nonetheless, that big S word, snow in the forecast. I'm meteorologist John Banghoff. Bundle up this weekend, stay warm, and we'll see you next week. Back to you guys in the studio. Campus area bus drivers face traffic citations. And the Buckeyes prepare to take on the Golden Gophers this Saturday. Stay with us. Since 2012, campus area bus system drivers have received eight traffic citations. As of November 6, cab drivers have received two citations this year, one for failure to control and another for assured clear distance. According to the Ohio Bureau of Motor Vehicles, both citations result in two points on the recipient's license and are recorded on an individual basis. The traffic citations issued the most to cabs drivers in 2012 to 2014 were failure to control and failure to yield in a left turn. Football gets frigid this weekend as the Buckeyes travel to Minnesota with temps in the single digits to the upper 20s. It'll be the first time Coach Urban Meyer has faced Minnesota head coach Jerry Kill. And as the Buckeyes narrow in on their second Big Ten championship berth, it'll be critical to secure two more wins. Lantern TV assistant sports director Aaron Yerian brings you more on this matchup. With a top 10 win under their belt in East Lansing, Coach Urban Meyer and the number 8 Ohio State Buckeyes look to finish the season strong as they take on the Golden Gophers this Saturday. Check out what the players and coaches had to say as they deal with Minnesota and the elements in Minneapolis. i got to give that Minnesota team a lot of credit. They're, they're rugged guys that play really hard. So all phases of special teams, you see it's either, either us or them and the 1-2 in the conference. And really good team. As far as the whole team, they're, I mean, they're probably one of the better teams we're going to play all year and their scheme is very similar to Michigan State's. Their blitz tendencies are a little different, but as far as an overall defense, very similar. We can't sleep on this team. You know, if, if we go in there not prepared, it's like walking into a hornet's nest. You know, the weather's going to suck. We haven't played a lot of uh, early games this year, you know, and we just came off a big win. So if we're not locked in and prepared, it could be, uh, it could be bad for us. And um, to we just got some momentum last week, and we just got to keep that going. Minnesota just, you know, cracked the top 25, and I feel like we have to prepare this week just as, as we prepared last week. We love playing in the cold, so, I mean, kind of makes it easier on our bodies. So, plus the snow just an added, it just adds on to it, makes it a little more fun, so. I, I don't think it's difficult just because, you know, our coaches, you know, they reiterate it every day. You know, we got we got another game this week. You know, we celebrated the win, you know, after the game, and, I, and we moved on right after that just because we have a lot at stake now. Ohio State's road to the Big Ten Championship and first-ever college football playoff continues Saturday as they head to TCF Bank Stadium to face the Golden Gophers of Minnesota. Kickoff is scheduled for noon. And until next time, for Lantern TV, I'm Aaron Yerian. That's all we have for you this week on Buckeye News Now. Remember to like us on Facebook and follow us on Instagram and Twitter. Thanks for watching. We'll see you all next week.